hospital emergency rooms, the sick children just keep coming, from toddlers to teens, mostly with respiratory infections, including pneumonia. Deadly illnesses are some of the scariest threats to the human race. Over the course of history, there have been a number of deadly viruses and illnesses that have swept through populations, taking out swaths of people, completely changing the course of history, from smallpox and Ebola to more mysterious illnesses in the Middle Ages. Today, we're talking about some of the scariest. We're starting off with leprosy. Now, a little disclaimer right off the bat, because I know I'm going to get comments about this. I'm going to be talking about viruses on this list as well as diseases and infections. You know, anything that causes death. Leprosy is still around today, now known as Hansen's disease. It's a bacterial infection that can lead to disfigurement and nerve damage if left untreated. And during the Middle Ages, leprosy was often misunderstood and feared, believed to be a punishment from God, leading to stigma and discrimination against people who were affected with it. In the 11th century, leprosy was especially bad throughout Europe. Leprosy hospitals, also known as leper colonies, were established to isolate and care for those affected. These hospitals provided a place for people with leprosy to receive some form of care and support away from the general population. Leprosy hospitals were common in many European towns and cities during the Middle Ages, but despite the attempts being made to isolate people with leprosy, the disease continued to spread because of the lack of effective treatment. Next we have smallpox, which is thankfully no longer a thing. Smallpox was a nasty virus that caused a very high death toll back in the day. When Europeans started exploring and settling in the Americas, they brought smallpox with them. But the thing was, Native Americans had never been exposed to it before, so they didn't have any immunity. When smallpox hit Native American communities, it spread very quickly. Since they didn't have any natural defenses against it, the virus hit them hard. It caused huge outbreaks and had devastating effects on their populations. Many Native Americans died from the disease, and it had a big impact on their societies and cultures. In fact, smallpox was one of the main reasons why you're European colonization was so successful in some places. It just wiped out large numbers of natives, weakening their resistance to European settlers. But it wasn't just in the Americas. Smallpox wreaked havoc all over the world including Europe, Asia, and Africa. It was a major killer before vaccines were developed to prevent it. Eventually, thanks to vaccines, smallpox was eradicated in 1980. Cholera mainly spreads through contaminated water and food, especially in areas with poor sanitation. If it's left untreated, 25 to 50% of cases can be fatal. Back in the day, cholera was a big problem, especially in crowded cities where sanitation was lacking. And during the 19th century, cholera outbreaks were pretty common in places like Europe and North America. One of the most famous outbreaks was the London cholera epidemic of 1854. It was traced back to a contaminated water pump on Broad Street, now Broadwick Street in Soho. A man named John Snow, this guy was a British physician who figured out that the contaminated water was the source of the outbreak. He removed the pump handle and the outbreak eventually died down. Cholera had a massive impact on public health and sanitation. It led to improvements in water and sewage systems in many cities, which helped prevent future outbreaks. But in places with poor sanitation, cholera still poses a threat to this day. The Spanish flu hit hard and spread globally in 1918 and 19. The Spanish flu was caused by an H1N1 influenza, a virus that spread rapidly. This is kind of crazy to think about, but it infected about one third one third of the world's population at the time, which was around 500 million people. That is a staggering number. And as for why it was called the Spanish flu, well, Spain was hit particularly hard. And since Spain wasn't involved in World War I, their newspapers were reporting on it more freely than in other countries. But it wasn't actually where the flu originated from. Not only was this flu highly transmissible, but it was also very deadly. It caused severe respiratory problems, pneumonia, and in some cases, it led to death. 
said that as many as 100 million people died of the Spanish flu. What made it even scarier was that it didn't just affect the elderly and the sick, it hit a lot of young, healthy adults as well. And the Spanish flu had a huge impact on the world. It disrupted economies, strained healthcare systems, and left millions mourning the loss of loved ones. Ebola first popped up in 1976 in two simultaneous outbreaks in Sudan and what is now the Democratic Republic of Congo. Ebola causes fever, severe headaches, muscle pain, weakness, fatigue, diarrhea, vomiting, abdominal pain, and unexplained bleeding or bruising. It's pretty nasty stuff. Over the years, there have been sporadic outbreaks in Africa, mostly in Central and West African countries. The outbreaks varied in size and severity, but it's always been a concern because Ebola is highly contagious and it can spread rapidly through close contact with infected bodily fluids. The largest outbreak in history happened in West Africa between 2014 and 16. It started in Guinea and then spread to Sierra Leone and Liberia. The outbreak was especially scary because it spread to densely populated urban areas, making it much harder to control. Nearly 30,000 people were infected and over a third of them died. The Marburg virus is another really scary one closely related to Ebola. It was first identified in 1967 when outbreaks occurred with lab workers in Germany who had been exposed to infected monkeys that had been shipped over from Uganda. Like Ebola, it's named after a place, this time the German city of Marburg. Similar to Ebola, Marburg virus causes a severe and often deadly illness. Symptoms are also similar. Headache, muscle pain, vomiting, diarrhea, and sometimes bleeding. Outbreaks of this virus have been rare, but when it does hit, it hits hard. Most outbreaks have happened in Africa, and it usually comes out of mines where people come into contact with bats, which are thought to be natural hosts of the virus. What's really creepy about this one is that the fatality rate has increased with every outbreak. In 1967, the mortality rate was about 24%. In 1998 to 2000, 83% of people died. And in a 2017 outbreak in Uganda, 100% of infected died. Now, there are a lot of factors that can kind of change those numbers, uh, but this just isn't something you want to mess with. We don't think much of the flu nowadays, but the 1918 flu outbreak was unlike anything the world had ever seen. Between 1918 and 1920, a deadly flu virus spread across the globe and infected over a third of the world's population, which back then was around 500 million. And out of those infected, 20 to 50 million died. What made this flu outbreak stand out from others before it was who it targeted. Normally the flu tends to hit the very young and elderly the hardest or people who were already sick, but this time it went after healthy, strong young adults. In the first 25 weeks of the outbreak alone, around 25 million people died. The mortality rate was between 10 to 20 percent. Back then, medicine wasn't as advanced as it is now, so people didn't have the same treatments or vaccines that we have today. Plus, the world was dealing with the aftermath of World War I, so resources were stretched very thin. Rabies is also no joke. Now, we haven't really had like these mass, you know, epidemics of rabies. But this one is just so scary, I, I just couldn't help but put it on here. It's a viral disease that can infect the brains and spinal cords of mammals, and that of course includes us. The virus spreads through the saliva in infected animals, usually through a bite. Once the rabies virus gets into your body, it starts making its way to your brain. And once it reaches your brain, it's pretty much game over. At first, you might not even notice you've been infected. It can take a long time before you start showing any symptoms. But when those symptoms kick in, they're horrifying. You might feel like you have the flu at first, fever, headache, weakness, but then things get strange. You might, you might start feeling anxious, restless, or even have hallucinations. Your muscles might start to spasm uncontrollably, especially when you try to swallow water, which is why people with rabies often develop a fear of water, a condition known as hydrophobia. And as the virus takes over your brain, you become extremely agitated, confused, and aggressive. You basically become a zombie. Your brain is being destroyed. And there's no coming back from that. Once symptoms appear, rabies is almost always fatal. So 
If you're bitten by a wild animal, do not wait. Get it checked out and dealt with. Here is a strange oddity from 14th and 16th century England, the sweating sickness. The sweating sickness appeared suddenly in England, with outbreaks popping up in 1485, 1508, 1517, 1528, and then 15. 51. The main symptom, as the name suggests, was profuse sweating. What was really scary about this illness is how fast it would strike. You'd be perfectly fine one minute and then bam, you'd suddenly have a fever, headache, and intense sweating. Some accounts describe victims dying just within hours of getting sick. Now, aside from the sweating, you'd have other symptoms like chills, muscle pain, headaches, sometimes delirium. As severe as the illness was though, it would never stick around for long. Outbreaks would only last a few weeks or months before disappearing. After the last major outbreak in 1551, the thing just went away. It never came back in the same form. And we really aren't sure what caused it in the first place. It's one of the biggest medical mysteries in history. And finally, we of course have the bubonic plague. Back in the 14th century, Europe faced one of its darkest times, the bubonic plague, also known as the Black Death. This was a seriously deadly disease caused by a bacteria spread by fleas that hung out on rats. When the rats died, the fleas would jump to humans, spreading the disease. When people got infected, they experienced some pretty awful symptoms. Swollen and painful lumps, high fevers, and overall weakness, and most people who got the plague didn't stand much of a chance. It was absolutely brutal. It's estimated to have killed between 75 to 200 million people wiping out about 30 to 60% of Europe's population at the time. Man, over half of the people you know could have died from this thing. That is so scary. Imagine like just half your neighbors, your friends, your family just being wiped out. Insane. With so many people dying, communities were torn apart and the economy took a nosedive because there just weren't enough workers to go around. The plague also came in waves, hitting Europe hard over several centuries. It wasn't until better hygiene and medical knowledge came along that the plague started to fade away, but not before leaving a huge mark on history. With all that said, folks, please wash your hands. I've been your host, James, and I will catch you, yes, you specifically, in the next video.